Big round of applause. Well, I'd like to begin by saying thank you, not just to all of you for being present here tonight, but to my colleagues here at SOAS, um, Sana and Mike, who've helped organize this as part of our New South Asia Institute, and to Sunam and all at the um, National Indian Students Union uh, for making this event happen here today at SOA. It's a great place to do it, somewhere where people who've been to my lectures are no stranger to the work of Mr. Chopra. You will know, of course, my inaugural lecture was mostly about Lage Raho Munabai, one of my all-time favorite films. And um, he very kindly gave me permission to use him images uh, for that talk. It's also taught on our BA and MA courses in Indian cinema at SOAS, so if you haven't done them, you're missing out. <laughs> now, before I ask you what's so funny about white people singing Bollywood songs, hello? <laughs> hello? Hmm. Um, we'll get on to serious matters, because I think one of the things tonight is this meeting of um, Indian and Western, this Hollywood move by one of India's leading directors and producers, which is something really very revolutionary and very new. And fascinating because as I see it, as I understand it, broken horses, um, our parindas, our birds have become horses. Um, we've moved the story of your wonderful film, Parinda, in any list of the great Hindi movies of all time. And it's been made into a Hollywood film, is that correct? Yes and no, Rachel, uh, because it started with Parinda. Actually, it started in a, it's a very funny story, me and Abhijat Joshi, my co-writer, we were traveling in, uh, from Boston to New York. Um, and we just, Ekla with the Royal Guard had some great reviews, actually, LA Times called it the lost work of David Lean, and New York Times called it the classic. So some museums in all over US had screenings. So we were traveling to Boston, and both of us had seen Departed of Martin Scorsese the previous night. And we were over a bottle of beer. Both of us agreed that we liked the original Hong Kong film, Infernal Affairs, much more than Departed. And I said, but the Americans are just loving this movie, but the original film is better. And as I went, came back with another bottle of beer, Abhijat looked at me and said, Parinda. We should do for it. So it really started like that, but it took us four years to write it. And finally, the film is something, it, it was inspired, that was the beginning. But it's not a, a remake, it's actually an original script that took us four years to write. The draft I shot, I think, was the 64th draft, so it was written like 63 times over. So it's different, but yet it's the same. And I'm, I'm very interested in these ways, you know, because we talk about how the cinemas are different, because one of the things that really annoys me is when you say you work on Indian cinema, is it's often seen that Indian cinema is in some way deficient, because it's different from Hollywood. And I was wondering about when you were making a Hollywood movie, were there things that you thought about particularly that you would have to avoid or that you would have to develop? Or how did you do it? I mean, it's, it's just partly, isn't it, the idea that... India is more aware of the rest of the world sometimes than the rest of the world is aware about India. So you were probably quite familiar with Hollywood. You know, uh, somebody said that, somebody who saw the film in, uh, in L.A., one of the critics said it's like Quentin Tarantino going to India and doing a song and dance film. It's that different. And uh, see, the point is that Hollywood has prejudices, and not only Hollywood. I think the West has a certain way they look at Bollywood. And that was one of the reasons that I did this Hollywood film, because I wanted to say in the movie, and I'm saying that to all of you who will hopefully see the film, that we can do it. We don't do it because our people, uh, we communicate with our people in a certain way. Uh, and, uh, you know, when, when I fell in love first time in Kashmir, I sang a song. Uh, you know, <laughs> we, we die and we sing songs. We, 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 kids are born and we sing songs. That's how we are. Actually, I said that, and I'm amazed you say that. I said it in Birmingham. I was here a long time back. I think it was with Parinda only, or maybe 1942, a love story. And uh, there was a critic, I won't name him. We had just seen Godfather 2. I, and I, I looked at them, and I said, I just saw this movie, and it's, it's a terrible film. <laughs> and everybody was quiet. I said, nobody was singing. You know, nobody sang a song. You know? 
all of them very serious, dark, dull, boring people. I mean, it's a different, see, when I make a Hindi movie, whether it's PK, Three Idiots, Parinita, 1942, and it's, I want to reach out to my people. I want to communicate. So I speak their language. It's like if I'm sitting here, I'm speaking English because everybody understands English. I'm not speaking German or Sanskrit or, or Urdu or Kashmiri that I can speak in. If I spoke the same thing in Kashmiri, nobody will understand. So I think the, the responsibility of the filmmaker is to communicate. And we communicate in a certain way in India. And that is why we make those films, which doesn't mean we can't do Broken Horses. We can. We choose not to. And that was the thing that, that drove me to make Broken Horses. And when James Cameron talked about it, Alfonso Curon saw it in London, talked about it, and a lot of others who haven't put their name but have raved about it, I knew that, that yes, it's done. It's, this is when you'll see. When I saw the film, the only thing Indian about the film is the spelling in my name. There's nothing else. And there is no Indian crew. There's a, Tom Stern, who was my DOP, I just saw me, just shot American Sniper. He's Clint Eastwood's cameraman. He's one of the best in the world. They were, we were like brothers making the film. So it wasn't... Uh, yeah, another thing which is interesting, and this will further answer your, your query in a way, that it took three days. And on day three, I told Abhijat, I said, this is a Michael Corleone moment now. Watch it. And Steve, who was dancing, was head of the unions, uh, Teamsters. So on day one, I asked him for a black car, and he said, Mr. Chopra, that's going to be very difficult. I said, OK, Steve, try anyway. So I shot, and he watched me making the movie. Next day, he came to me, and he said, Mr. Chopra, you, I'll try. I'll, I'll try and do this. I will try. Day three, he came with a cup of coffee and said, Vinod, you must be tired. Have coffee, you know? And I said, what about the cars? He says, I got six black cars for you to choose. You choose. So it was really, it took three days for that prejudice to break, for them to start looking at not some Bollywood guy who's come to Hollywood making a movie. It took them three days. It took him three days to figure out this guy knows his job. And after that day, it was just so smooth. And, and the crew actually at the end of it gifted me a book, which every time I tell them to bring and they don't, it's in my hotel room. It's a great book, and they all said wonderful things. So, so that's it. There are prejudices, but we break them. And that's, that's what Broken Horses is all about, I think. And are you going to release it as well in India? In yeah, it's releasing worldwide on 10th of April. In English? Dubbed in, in Hindi? No. It's an English film. It's not a Hindi film. It won't be dubbed in Hindi. <laughs> it's not. It's, 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 it's a point I'm making, and the point would be lost if I dubbed it in Hindi. Though I will make more money, but I won't do it. That's that's a very uh, that's quite a sort of <laughs> shocking thing, I think. There really, I mean, the idea that you know you actually go and I mean, there have been English language m movies made in India before, but not a Hollywood movie made by an Indian. I think this is where the real difference is taking place. But in a way, I mean. Why you did it when you were so successful in Indian movies? You know, it's, you went and did it on the back of your success. Well, the only thing that comes to my mind is I must be crazy. <laughs> I have to be crazy because after three idiots, I should have made four idiots. <laughs> Logically, you know, and made tons of money and, and then pr probably make five idiots. Who knows? Like seven, f Fast and Furious, seven. I, uh, yeah, I, you know, I have never... Can, can you just dim that light or just, it's really hurting me. Then I'll have to wear dark glasses, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. See, the, I think, you know, I have, what, it's very strange that whenever I made a film, whether it's the PK, Bunabhai, three, whatever, I have made a movie I have believed in. And it's become successful, like, you know, as you know, it's the biggest hit of all time. But when we were making any one of these films, including Bunabhai, the idea was not to make a hit film. Actually, I was pleasantly reminded when that lady sang some songs from my movies. Suddenly, I sat there, and I've forgotten all these films and all this music I've created because I'm so involved in Broken Horses. And suddenly, it seemed to me, what a long journey it has been, Rachel. And what a long journey it is from Bumuro to, to Broken Horses. It's amazing. And it's also... Actually, you have to be mad <laughs> to be able to do Bumuro and Broken Horses. I, I don't think I'm a, <laughs> I, 
I, I think you have to be crazy. But it's one of those things when you try, I mean, if you try to look at your career and see a path through it, I mean, it's very complicated. I mean, you come from Kashmir, you studied at the FTII in Pune, um, and then you make, I mean, Purinda was really, I mean, the, the film that people think of when they think of the cop movie from Bombay. I mean, the film with its evocation of the city and the way it's edited. And, you know, I think that shootout round the roundabout is one of those classic moments that everybody remembers right, right. from the film. And then you move, you move from there over to something completely different. I mean, you, you're, you've made historical films, you've made... Epic. I mean, you're always on the epic scale, aren't you? <laughs> you know, I've always, I believe, uh, I think, you know, I've never followed a, a, the path that that is there for you to follow. I think I've always wandered here and there and, and done things that, that excite me, um, whether it's 42, which, you know, which was very different from Parinda. Um, and then Munna Bhai MBBS, that time there was no comedy, and that's the first comedy I actually wrote with Raju. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why I do this, but I think it's because of my lack of uh, education, maybe. And I say that I didn't get a BA or a MA, or I was not fortunate enough to come to institutions like this. So because I went to DAV school, and that's it, and then I'm BA fail, actually. <laughs> so I'm all over the place. I can just do anything. I'm not, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I'm like, this is it. But your films always raise big questions. I mean, they're things that academics find particularly fascinating. I mean, a clavier, I know colleagues have found that, um, the way that it takes, I mean, a clavier, mm. of course, the name is very evocative immediately. Yeah. Or you've taken 1942 or, Parin I mean, these are films set in the past and it's the way you're looking at them. Is this a sort of popular way of looking at the past or is it your obsession with history? You know, I, I because I grew up in a small village in Kashmir and I was like... Uh, uh, my I learned my ABC when I was 16 years old, really, and my whole uh, education, and not, well, not literacy, but my father was, was a very honest man, very poor man, uh, and he actually just constantly quoted Ghalib and Khalil Gibran, who I was reminded with, because when I read, read the name Khalili. So my whole, my childhood was really full of, uh, uh, you know, Ghalib and, and, and Gibran. So I don't know. I think somewhere in my head, I am still uh, living here, but there's a lot of past in me. There's a lot of... See, it's very difficult to figure out why you do what you do, actually. It's, it's probably uh, somebody else who's an expert in this field can say, okay, why has this man done what he's doing? Uh, it's very, very difficult for me to tell you, but the only thing is, whatever I've done, whether it's 1942 or whether it's Broken Horses, I've done it because I believed that was the right thing to do at that time. 42, I did because at that time, the Hindi film music, if you study, had become terrible. There was all these songs of Khatkaile, Sarkia, you know, I remember. And, and I hated it. And I, I was very angry because I used to sing Hindi film songs when, like I said, I fell in love and I still remember in Kashmir I sang an old song saying... Yeah? Ah, Sarkai Sarkai Lukatia. Lukatia. Yeah, so I was, I was very angry. <laughs> so so I, I created a... When you see Ladki Ko Dekha To Aisa Laga, you, I, I heard it after a lot of, lot of days. There's hardly any music. There's no strings. There's just one ting tong. There's nothing. But it's melody. So for me, 1942, A Love Story was really because... And let me tell you something, which is like, it's an interesting thing for students. I think it's interesting to know. R.D. Berman was going through a very difficult time. So when we made 42, he was not hired by HM. Nobody wanted to work with him. So I went to him with Kuchnako. I had done Parinda with him. And he made the first tune of Kuchnako. Which was which went like and people who know Hindi film music will know this. It went kuch na kaho, kuch bhi na kaho, kya kehna. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I said, and I'm I'm I speak my mind openly and clearly as you will notice this evening. So uh, so R D Burman asked me, uh, kaisa laga? And normally, I I immediately say. So I said he was going through a bad time. There were musicians. I didn't want to tell him it's bad. So I said. Dad, I'll think about it. 
He said, nahi, par abhi kaisa laga? So I thought I'll gently break the news to him. <laughs> so I said, Dada, asal mein achha nahi hai. And then I went on saying, actually, it's shit. And then the guy started, <laughs> and then I went on and I said, you know, it's bullshit. And it's, <laughs> so he's looking at me and right on where he was sitting, there was an S.D. Berman photograph. So I looked at S.D. Berman. I said, actually, I'm looking for him, but he's dead. And you are the best. And you are giving me this crap. He said, no, you don't understand. That music doesn't sell anymore. I said, that's my problem. It doesn't sell, I'm dead, but I can't have this. He said, give me one week. I went the next week and there was nobody there, Michael, nobody in that whole room. So I thought he's not going to do the film. So he came to me and said, I it's difficult, give me another week. I went a week later, and if you recall that song, he started with uh, a tune of S.D. Berman. It goes, Rongila, 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 Re, Rongila. And when he sang that, I raised my hand. He looked at me. He said, the song has not started yet. And I said, if this is the first note, this is perfect. The song will not go anywhere, Dada. And that's exactly what happened with that. If you recall, there's a, 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 actually a flute that plays this note. And then it goes to... So that is how the music was created. That even my... People who were working with me, like R.D. Burman, wanted to create the same Khatiya music, which I was fighting. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, because they thought that's what sells. So, so this whole idea of what sells, I react to. It's broken horses. Did I make it because it'll do $100 million? No. It might. But did I do it? No. Why did I make it? Because it made me very, very angry. That when ever, and I, you know, when I saw the prejudice people have towards our cinema... It has annoyed me. And this is my answer to them. So I'm like a kid who gets angry. And I think I'm corrected because I think I thought that the tune there in Kuchna Kaho was An Milo, An Milo Sham Savare. Well, From you know, in every tune you might, you scholars, have, yeah. you have studied oh. and you might say, oh, this dialogue actually was in that movie. I don't know. <laughs> But Wait till you get me on to Munabai. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know? Maybe, but not really. But again, I mean, that, and again, I mean, very sadly, I mean, but wonderful that R.D. Berman left this world with that great film. Oh, so the younger was... generation knew him, you know. That but the sad thing was he died before the music release. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd regret that always. He just died. Yeah. But he heard the music, which was amazing. And we threw a party for him and he heard it with uh, a thousand people. But he, I wish he had lived. See, this is what I say. When I say, when people say what sells. Now, R.D. had no idea that he had created 42. And hmm. people who had forsaken him, and I won't name them, it's very easy to figure out, actually owned him after his death hmm. because of 1942 a love story. And suddenly there was R.D. Burman back. Otherwise, he would have died. Nobody would have, he would have, you know. So the point is, that's why when, when people say about anything, I always say that the idea is to create and leave it behind. Um, I mean, of the little study I did, I was a great fan of Van Gogh, the painter. And I always thought that this guy could not even sell a single painting. So really the world, when he existed, told him, you're an asshole, you can't paint. And But he went on painting and look at where he is. And I think therefore, personally, Right from Parinda to, to all these films that I've done, including Broken Horses, I am kind of beyond <coughs> criticism of, of critics telling me, is it good, is it bad? Because I don't care. I'm creating what I genuinely believe is me, and I'm leaving it behind. And hopefully, now or sometime, people will like it. I, I'm hoping they will, because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> things that's very striking in your work is, is the people you've worked with, that sometimes they've been people like R.D. Berman, who seem to have been at the end of their career, but they've also been people you've helped at the beginning of their career. I mean, Sanjay Dila Bansali, for instance. Yeah. I mean, working with him and R.D. Berman together, presumably, at times? Well, Sanjay was a kid. He was not somebody that I listened to seriously. Mm. He was learning. He was one of the kids who was learning, but he was a very bright kid. 
Actually, every time you mention that, I, I, I have to tell you this is one regret I have. <laughs> you know, there was a, there's a show called X Factor uh, that came to India. And these guys came to me. And I said, I'll take what Amitabh Bachchan charges. Two crore per show, all that. So there were 43 shows and, you know, my God. They came and said almost yes to me. And I didn't want to do it. And then I asked them, why are you giving me so much money? <laughs> and they started with, from Sanjay Bansali to Raju Hirani to, well, they had 17 A to Vidya Balan to Baman Hirani to Nana Patekar. And they said, this is what you've done. And that's when I realized that I could actually cash it because here was a... <laughs> And, but I didn't want to do TV. So, of course, I said no. And finally, I apologized. I said, you know, I asked for this money only because I thought you'd say no. But now that you're saying yes, I have to say no. And then I flew for broken horses, saying no to all that money. I, I'm trying to raise money in in U.S. And Michael Linton, who's CEO of Sony, which was the television channel that was doing it, looked at me and said, oh, you said no to so many million dollars because he calculated in dollars. I said, Michael... If somebody told me it's dollars with which I could do broken horses, I would have said yes. I just thought it's Indian crores, and I said no. So, so yeah. So that's that's who I have been. I've, I mean, when you mentioned Sanjay Bansali, there are many others who who. But I didn't do it to do it. My idea was not to mentor. My idea was to to pass on. You see, the the the, the village I come from, I learned from my father. It was a verbal. It's, it's what's called the Guru Shish Parampara. Verbally, we, we convey, okay, this is who I am. Yeah, I have no books. I have written nothing, but I want to pass on to you uh, my knowledge, my experience of life. So I think it is that that I've tried to pass on to, to all the people who've come to work with me, and that's become a kind of, I can cash on it. I hope the X Factor guys come back to India. <laughs> But, this time I'll do it. <laughs> but I mean, you also obviously have an eye. I mean, San, Sanjay Dutt was somebody who, uh, well, I mean, when you took him on in Mission Kashmir and so on, I mean, people didn't really, I think at that point, take Sanjay Dutt so seriously. No. And then you put him in Munabai, where you can actually see the man's a genius. I mean, you know, I can't imagine anybody else ever playing Munabai. And that's the idea as well, you know, seeing people and bringing them in. And so you obviously have this way of understanding the creativity, but you've also got the business sense. And how much do these two come into conflict? I mean, you're saying you don't care, but you have been remarkably successful okay. financially for someone who doesn't care. Yes, let me answer that. Now, Munna Bhai Shah Rukh Khan was to do. I would have made tons of money. OK, this is my business sense. Hell of a lot of money. One day, I met Sanjay Dutt. I looked at him and I said to Raju, and that time Shah Rukh was saying, I'm going there, you know, you, everybody knows Shah Rukh is a good guy, but, you know. He said, I'm going, I'll do this. I told Raju, I said, yeah, this guy is actually Munna Bhai. He's Munna Bhai. And Sanjay Dutt was supposed to do a small role in that film, which Jimmy Shergill did. And uh, now, now, why I'm telling you this, it's very interesting for you know to know about my business sense. I will tell you this. When Sanjay Dutt went to jail, right in the beginning, the whole industry boycotted him. I didn't know Sanjay. I did not know him. I went and announced a film with him. And the reason I did it, that unless proved guilty in court of law, you're innocent. So I was banned. Okay? Sanjay Dutt comes out of the jail and says to me, first time I met him and says, when do we start the movie? I said, never. He said, but you announced it. I said, no, it was not It was just a stand I was taking. That stayed with him. So when I told him that you're playing Munna Bhai, he thought it's that small role I'm talking about. He said, anything you tell me, I will do. And he was not a star. He was not a big star. I said, no, you're playing the main lead. And when we released Munna Bhai, on the day of release, theatres were totally empty. On the first show, theatres were empty. And Raju Hirani, who had made the film, was very unhappy. I called him. I gave him some money. I said, it's not about this film. Make one more. Because we still have money in the bank. And that is my business sense. It's crazy. The fact that I'm successful is a miracle. <laughs> you know? It's a miracle.
Now, in retrospect, people say, wow, <laughs> superb, broken horses, you know, runs, does 100 million. It, it can just, bomb, you know, people can say, no, so what? But I did it because I believe in it. And, and a lot of Bombay film producers, I've never talked because I hardly go out, I hardly talk. But this is also, this should be conveyed to a lot of people in Bombay because they all think this guy has a great business sense. And this is my, I have done what I believed in. So why the break until Broken Horses? Were you planning Broken Horses for a very long time? From directing, break yeah, from yeah, directing. Yeah, it took me five years to write it, Rachel. After Eklavya, the Royal Guard. See, Eklavya, the Royal Guard opened the gates for me in the West. Everybody who saw the film, uh, you know, my... I mean, it was Oscar nominated, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, it went for... So it was like, you know, my first agent, Jeff Berg, who was the ICM chairman, I got a call, I got a letter in, uh, in, in India saying... I represent people like Bernardo Bertolucci, Roman Polanski, I'd like, like to represent you. I thought it was a joke. I thought somebody was fooling me. <laughs> so I said, is this guy real? Jeff Berg, he was real. And so, uh, because he saw Eklavia. So really speaking, that movie is what led me to do Broken Horses. All the actors who worked with me, Nicolas Cage, who I met in London, had seen the film. Um, so actually he said, I, I, I cried six times in... in the Royal Guard, it's such a great film. So I said, what were you smoking? I want to give it with every DVD the same. <laughs> so yeah, so that opened doors for me. But again, Eklav in the Royal Guard was not a good business sense movie. It's a movie I believed in. I, I, I believe that in our culture, there's subservience. And that's why when you went, it should not be. You should be able to question your guru. And that is why I made that film. And in A Clavier, like Perinda, again, these sort of moments of cinematography that stick in the mind, when you were doing Broken Horses, I mean, working in a landscape that's new to you how, did you, how did you go about thinking about the visuals of shooting in California rather than places you were more familiar with? You know, uh, one of the things that, uh, that I will always cherish, that when uh, James Cameron saw the film first time, uh, he said to me, how long did you take to storyboard this film? And I said, I did not storyboard this film. And he was shocked. He said, this composition is without storyboarding? And I told him the same story I'm telling you. I said that I couldn't read and write well when I was young, so maybe I've developed a visual sense that that is because I couldn't read. He couldn't believe that. And, and coming from him, that was a big thing for me. So... I have a certain visual sense, like this light is still really bothering me because of my <laughs> This eyes. one isn't great this for is, me either. Yeah, no, you used to, that's why I wear dark glasses. Or today I didn't want to wear dark glasses because it is evening and I thought everybody said this guy is crazy. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I am sensitive to visuals. Uh, answering your question, I did not go to make a Western in a way. This film initially uh, was based in New York City. But I realized that I can't make a movie in New York because when I went to the city, I didn't know the city. So I told Abhijat, I said, let's go to the basic elements. Water, I know. Wind, I know. Earth, I know. Fire, I know. So I used, I made that whole film around these elements. And if you see this film, you will see all the elements in play, which I know which are universal elements. So I, I used English language because that was foreign to me, but in terms of visuals, I didn't want to burden myself with New York City. I went to what I know anywhere in the world. These are the elements. So that is how it became a Western. And so we've we've talked a bit about the oh, we've got we know you're financially savvy so we know that we know the script and the visuals, but the actors. What was it like working with a new actors that were new to you? It was amazing. For me, it was such a learning experience. Vincent D'Onofrio, you know, all of them, Chris Buddy and Antonio. It was, you know, for me, it was like a dream come true. Because, see, in India, we have a lot of warmth, a lot of warmth on the set. Everybody's like, it's like a family. But we also have a lot of inefficiency. <laughs> Unbelievable amount of it. I mean, Amitabh can come, you've written a book on He can come and say, I have, you know, yaar, mera, traffic for you. Two hours later, sir. <laughs> but it's, it's family. It's, so it's very warm but very inefficient. <laughs> Hollywood is very cold but extremely efficient. If it's six in the morning, the actor is ready with his lines and makeup. Six in the morning where I want him. I did not ever have to say, hey, where, is, where are the 
where are the where is the star where is Vincent where anybody so for me it was amazing and also you must understand that in India people know who I was okay who I am at least then nobody knew me I was like a kid out of school with a script it's like you know I say jokingly uh, Steven Spielberg going to Mars to make a film and Martians tell me Steve you make movie yeah from where earth Planet Earth, okay, show me what you got. It was like that. For me. <laughs> and they respected that script. And for me, I felt as if I was out of the school because people respected me for what I had written, not for who I was. And that was a great feeling. And did the actors watch your Hindi movie? Actually, I told them not to. I said, it'll scare you because, <laughs> you know, my Hindi movies are over the top. They would just die. They watched Ekla with the Royal Guard, which was closer to their style. But, uh, but surprisingly, uh, they watched Mission Kashmir, which they loved. They watched uh, 19... Then they watched everything. When I was making the movie, they watched everything I had done. Um, but uh, I, I didn't recommend. I said, don't see, because this is very different. And I thought they'd be scared. And we haven't really, I mean, I've only seen the trailer, but you, I mean, presumably there's backing, must be backing music. And I mean, was that strange working with a different, did you have a particular style of backing music, working with Western, were you working with Western musicians? Yes, it was very difficult for me. Ah. It was because I used, you know, sitar, sarod, and suddenly I had violins in Macedonia. And I had, uh, you know, John Debney is my composer who done Iron Man and things like that. So it was like uh, very difficult. But, you know, another unusual thing about this film is Shantanu Moitra, who's a Bengali composer, was actually with me. So he has worked with John Debney, who's an American composer, and collaborated to make this music score. And that's why it's so unusual, I think. Well, I suppose my next question is, when am I going to see the film? I think it's April the 10th. I think we'll all be... I won't be here then, but I'll be trying to see it as soon as I'm back in the UK. Looking forward to it. But I know many of you in the audience have questions that you want to ask. So what I'll do is, um, do you like to take them one on one, or do you want me to take three and what then if? you answer? What if? What if? Yeah, see how they go. We'll start at the front. Yeah. And could you could you just identify yourself when you ask your question? Just say your name and if you have an affiliation to Soas or Nisu, that would be great. Thanks. Um, hi, uh, my name is. Thank you. Um, it's what I find most interesting is to see somebody from our part of the world going into Hollywood and not telling an NRI or like a slumdog millionaire type story, or you know like painting yourself as um, immigrants. So it's 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 a Western story that you are essentially telling. And I find also the fact that you know because it's coming from you and you have written it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what universal elements will there be in the story and what emotions that you know as as from that part of the world, a viewer I can connect with. Um, that I would like to hear your thoughts on that. And secondly, just a second question. Um, Let's go one by one because I, I, I have to remember then. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, the, 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 the reason I wanted to do this film is not because I want to do uh, Indian going there. and you know, that's, that's, That doesn't interest me. I was really wanting to prove a point. I really would like you to be proud of this film. And if you were not, I would be very unhappy. That was one of the reasons I did this film. And I wanted myself to be very proud of it. And it's very difficult because it wasn't just me. It's the first time anybody has co-written, produced and directed. And I could have made a fool of myself and all of you. Somebody say, here's Bollywood coming to Hollywood. Uh, did I mention that Jim Cameron uh, clap thing? No, I didn't. Let me tell you what happened. There was a huge cinema. Huge cinema hall, and Jim Cameron sat on front row, which we call the third class in India. I was in the balcony right Charana. at the back. Yeah, Charana. <laughs> and when the movie got over, the theater was still, the titles were going, it was dark, and I started, I heard claps. And this guy started clapping and walked all the way back, and I thought that he's mocking me for a <laughs> moment, because that was, you know, actually, that was one moment I said, it, he can't love it so much, so he's going to come and tell me, Bollywood, welcome to Hollywood. I mean, I really thought that. And he had read the script and liked it, so I thought he will say it was a great script and you made a hash of it. When he came to me and he said, you did it, you know, and I looked at him and he hugged me and then, of course, he started praising. That's when I realized that 
yes, that's done, yes, that's done. Having said that, my idea was not to do an immigrant, you know, Abhi's Indian slum dog. I don't have to. I wanted to prove a point that we can do it. See, when a mathematician or a scientist comes to Oxford or Cambridge, he's, doing, he's teaching or learning the same mathematics, the same science he's doing in India. Cinema is a completely different art form. India is a completely different art form. I actually must thank those two people who danced and they sang the song. They're somewhere here. But I really thank you so much because I went back and I remembered moments when I created that music. And at this moment, when I'm full of broken horses, it's meant even more to me that from, nay, 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 you know, to, to, to this movie. But that is what I wanted to prove. So it's not, it's not, it's very international. All the best for that. Thank and you. We will sh be sure to watch it. I um, think I'll take, do you mind if I come back to you later better. and take another question? I'll just pass the microphone back and let's see, do a lucky dip where it ends up. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm a SOAS student. I'm studying economics and I'm from Pakistan. Um, I really enjoyed a lot of your, all of your movies actually. I just wanted to ask you, um, when you were making PK, were you worried about the backlash with the religious aspects of it? I loved it and I thought it was a great message, but I just want to ask that. And uh, the second question would be, will you ever make a movie with Raju Hirani not being the director? No, I, I made films with Raju Hirani not being, Parinita that I made, he was not the director. Oh, um, I didn't know Ferrari that. Ki Sawari was not the director. Okay. No, no, yeah. clearly. Okay. Uh, Raju Hirani is now, he was, uh, Raju now is Rajkumar Hirani. He doesn't have to stay with me. There's, there's, there's no <laughs> reason. He's brilliant from. though. It, no, yeah. no, I mean, it's, it's like he's totally free. Okay. I never, not even after Munna, there was nothing that, nothing, okay. no three movie deal like Yashra, nothing. Yeah. Uh, he's so totally free and I, I don't even know. Religious aspect of See, when PK. we did PK, I was jokingly telling everybody before I made PK, I said, finally, we'll get Bharat Ratan in Pakistan. <laughs> I was fully aware of what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, I am from Kashmir. Mm -hmm. My house was looted by militants. My mother had to literally run away from Kashmir. Uh, and something that happened to me, which you'll understand, um, I think, a lot, is when I went to Kashmir, I went with the uh, army, which was much later. And there was this guy, uh, you know, bearded man who comes and there are people who, who are living in my house. And, and uh, this lady who used to be, uh, you know, she used to come and watch Chawal Chhatti. I don't know how to say that in English. Right? Yeah, she, yeah, she used to come mm. once a month to do that. She was the woman who had taken over the house. So uh, my immediate reaction when I looked at this guy was, was, oh, this guy. Okay. Then she took me around the house and our puja was on the top floor. And when the house, the top floor was dirty, but when she opened the puja room, it was very clean. I looked at her and she realized, and she immediately said to me, no, no, none of us enter this place. He goes to clean it because he's a namazi. See, it even now kind of chokes me because it, it was a slap on my face. This guy who did namaz five times went to clean a Hindu puja. So, that, that's what so, so, so PK was part of that. Okay. And uh, I'd just like to say that um, your wife is the best film critic in India. Thank you. I <laughs> hope you can. <laughs> can somebody record this? And then <laughs> her book, her I, books, her her books her. are required reading on the cinema course here. Yeah. I'll have you know. Okay. Can we take another question? Keep it going back. And then oh, and don't forget to pass it this side later. Good yeah. evening. Um, I'm actually initially from Mumbai. I've been here for eight years. So lovely to see people from Mumbai here. Mm. Uh, my name's Sneha. I've actually got a friend who works for Nisu. So she's referred me to come here. I'm very grateful, honored to be here. My question is, obviously, your stories that you've written are so different, right? From Parinda to 1942, to PK, to Munna Bhai. Each story is unique. Mission Kashmir was unique. How much of your personal life leaks into the story that you write? Totally. Totally. Because I'm ill-read. I can't, I can't read Shakespeare even now. I don't understand him. I would love to, but I don't. 
because I'm not read too much, every story is really my story. I mean, Broken Horses is about brothers because I'm very close to my brother who did PhD here in London School of Economics, I was telling Michael. It's, it's, uh, so it's my story. Munna Bhai is, you know, somebody told me this morning, uh, it was a radio interview, he said, how did you have the confidence to walk into Hollywood and say, you know what, I can do it. I said, because I am Munna Bhai. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> See, really? you have to say, watch like him. Namrath. 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 I can do it. So, yeah, it's just, it's really a lot of me in, in my films. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for Yeah, thank you. Here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm Jishnu Soni. Uh, she invited me to this event as well. Uh, Why has it taken you so long to come to Sowas? I don't know. Nobody <laughs> invited me before that. <laughs> yeah. Keep coming. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, my question is like, uh, what what would you advise and like how to if for an aspiring actor or director to go into uh, Hindi film industry, and especially from if you are based it, over here. Uh, I'll tell you this. This is again a, a thing I remember with Akira Kurosawa, who was one of the greatest filmmakers ever. I asked him the same question. I was a student in Delhi. He had come there with Michelangelo Antonioni that time and Ilya Kazan and I sat there and I asked him, uh, Akira Kurosawa, I looked at him and I said, how do you write? And he used to speak in Japanese and he had a Japanese interpreter. So he looked at me and said, uh, write? Fade in? I said, yeah. Then he said, write, write, write. Then he went on, write, 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 write. Then he said something in Japanese. And the interpreter said, that's the only way to write a screenplay. So my answer is very simple. You have to write, write, write. <laughs> There's no other way. 66 times this broken horses. I, you know Vikram Chandra, she knows Vikram Chandra. He was my wife's uh, highly qualified, great writer. And when we started writing, we used to send it to him. And he... I have, me and Abhijat, he used to tear the pages and send it back. It's rubbish, is this? <laughs> <laughs> and many days later, there was one page that had no note. And me and Abhijat said, we have one page. <laughs> That's how we wrote, broken horses. So you've got to push it. You've got to do it. It's not, there's no other way. Can we send the microphone back? At, start heading this way a bit, then we'll come back. My name is Veena. Um, in all the movies that you, you make, you are questioning something, you're going against the, the conventions and the norm. So does that make you a rebel? And what makes you question everything? You know, if I'm, whether I'm a rebel or not really is for you to, to figure out. My wife thinks I'm uncouth. <laughs> I'm, um, I have uncivilized, my daughter thinks. <laughs> but am I a rebel? I don't know. I don't take rubbish from anybody, whoever. I speak my mind clearly. I speak my truth. And if that's being a rebel, then so be it. But I am not a rebel for the sake of, oh, I'm a rebel. I, I don't think I'm a rebel. I'm, I'm a man who believes in what he does. And, and he speaks his mind clearly. I, it's for you to say. I, I don't think. I, I, would like, I would like to believe that I have followed my heart. And if that's being a rebel, then I am, I guess. One last question, I'm afraid. One last question. Oh, I'm a short one, yeah. yeah. I'm Ubaid Akhtar. I'm from Delhi. I'm practicing social work uh, here in uh, UK. So my question is very simple. You know, it's uh, your movies, most of the time, you know, in your movies, they, there are social messages. And is uh, there a social message in Broken Horse as well? Horses? Yeah, Broken Horses is a movie that will bring you closer to your family to your siblings. That's what I'm saying in the movie, in a way. I'm talking about the futility of violence, and also it's talking about brotherhood. It's, it's really, I think the world is becoming such a violent place. There is so much violence now in the world that it's very scary. There's a line that we wrote in PK, it says, if this is how the world goes, sab, sab jute reh jayenge. For me as a filmmaker, it's a very scary thing. And I think what I'm saying in Broken Horses is really the futility of violence and the joy of family and brotherhood and, and love. Alfonso Cuaron in his quote said that it's a film about love. Uh, 
it is that's what i want to say i want people to live in harmony brotherhood as i told my friend from pakistan uh, coming from a man whose house was looted uh, i think that it's very important for us to really go out there and really you know like i said mom give each other a jadoo ki jaffi give each other a hug and and say you know let's love let's not let's not hate let's not be wild and let's try and understand each other it's very dangerous where the world is i don't know what's going to happen 50 years from now with this kind of violence i think we'll just blow up the whole planet one day no really it's very scary that's what that's what the film is about well thank you very much for that and giving us all thank you and it's it's been wonderful to have a talk here about a film we haven't yet seen we hope we'll get you back to talk about it and i'm sure it won't be long till we start seeing hollywood films endorsed by vidu vino chopra thank, thank you very much thank you thank you thank you i really appreciate thank and i really am very grateful for that journey that you guys took me with my music and and everything really it was wonderful i've got one final performance as well for you so thank you Sure. Just to complete that journey. With pleasure. With pleasure.